Network shares are an essential part of any network providing access for users to share resources such as files, folders, printers, and more. And more importantly, it centralizes data management. One of the most important protocols that makes all of this work, especially in Windows Enterprise networks, is SMB. SMB is widely used for sharing files, printers, and is the backbone of Windows network share access. And I'll put it this way, if you've ever printed something in your office at work, chances are that more than likely that was an SMB connection making that happen. Okay, let's have your Windows system up and open up a file explorer and follow along. Let's go inside of the local disk and let's actually create a folder that we can share. So we'll go and make a new folder. Let's call it something maybe like data. Now, if we go inside of this folder, let's go and make a new file just so that we have something to serve and we can make a new text document. We'll call this hello from windows. Put some text inside too to make it feel welcoming. Perfect. Now let's go back up and we need to right click this folder and go to properties. Then we'll go to the sharing tab and we want to hit share. The default permissions are totally fine in this case. Hit share, hit yes to turn on network discovery. And that's our share. So that name right there, that's the name of our network share for data. Okay, so let's go and actually connect this network share now from another workstation. So let's go inside of Linux and let's do it from there. Connecting the network shares manually requires us to connect from a client. So we have SMB client. Let's run a quick what is on SMB client and see exactly what it says. It's an FTP like client to access SMB CIFS resources on servers. It's really straightforward. So what we can do is just run the command of SMB client, TAC U, we need a username, let's use administrator. And then we can use the TAC L flag to get a listing of all the file shares available on a server. So if we put TAC L and then target a server, let's say 10.10.0.5 for Windows, it will then ask us for a password. So let's put that in. And there we go. We have some shares available to us. So let's run through what these are. First, we can see our data share. So that's available to us to connect. And let's look at the other ones now. We also have the admin share with a comment of remote admin. The admin share is really important. It actually allows system administrators to remotely access the system files and perform administrative tasks. And an example might be to remotely install software updates on multiple computers. Next, we have the C share and that allows system administrators to remotely access the entire C drive. And this allows you to perform remote file management tasks. So an example for that might be to remotely access log files or make configuration changes on a specific software. And then we have the IPC share. And this one's a little bit different because it's not really a true share like the other ones. It's actually for inter-process communication, hence IPC. Whereas the admin share was about accessing system files and light configuration changes and the C share more for the entire C drive itself, like pulling log files, the IPC share lets us do something like start and stop services. So a little bit different. However, obviously isolated and segmented for security purposes. Layers of security is always important. Cool. Okay, so let's go and actually connect to this SMB share. And in order to do that, we would need to mount the share with the mount command. So what is mount? Well, it mounts a file system. And that's what we're doing here. We're actually mounting a file system as an SMB share. And keeping that in mind, that means we have to specify a file system. And there's one that we could use that's really common, CIFS, as we saw earlier. And we can look at the man page more specifically by typing man mount.cifs to go specifically to the entry on it. And CIFS, as we can see, is for the common internet file system. And it's just a generic file system that is highly compatible with a lot of other file systems. So let's go and mount that SMB share now using CIFS. First, we need a directory. So let's call one SMB share. And then we're going to use that folder. And then we'll mount this SMB share as a file system within that folder. And it does require sudo. So the command would be sudo mount tac t that specifies CIFS and then tac o username equals administrator and then our SMB server. And then we need to specify the target folder, which in this case has to be an SMB share. So we use data and then we need to specify the folder on our local system. So that would be slash home slash Ubuntu slash SMB share. Perfect. So now we just need to enter in the password 
and off it goes. And we're connected. That's really it. Now let's look inside the folder and see what we can see. And there's our text file. So once it's actually mounted and configured, really easy. Now we can cat that file, we can work with it. So let's actually cat the file and see what's inside. And we see our message, hi there. Cool, so now you could actually make a share for yourself if you'd like, maybe a little movie share and transfer things on your home network. And let's do that. Let's actually copy hello from Windows. And it's really just like copying another file at this point. Now that it's mounted, it feels just like it's part of the Linux file system. So there it is. So let's go back to that df command that we learned in the Linux module. If we run it now, throw an attack h for human readable, we can actually see our mounted share. And that's pretty cool, right? It actually is part of our file system now. And this is where we would see it by running that df command. And then last but not least, there is umount. So what is umount? Well, unmount. Unmount is a tool we can use to just unmount the share. So we can run sudo umount, specify the folder that we mounted before, and it's done. If we look inside, we can see our file that we copied still exists, but inside of SMB share, well, if we ls it, it's just a regular folder now. It doesn't exist to do anything else. And that's generally working with a network share. They're all sort of similar. There's some mounting, there's connecting, there's clients or servers, there's credentials passed, and specifying different mount points. Now, thankfully, in Windows Enterprise Networks, this is all managed by your system administrator preparing policies that allow you as a user to connect to what, and it's all done behind the scenes.